Spacecraft development is a risky and sometimes explosive business. Sometimes just getting it off the launch pad can prove to be a challenge in itself. But the challenge is even greater when a new system tries to do unusual things. The first ever orbital mission of SpaceX's huge new Starship vehicle will basically be a coin flip. I'm not saying it'll get to orbit, but I am guaranteeing excitement. So, it won't be boring. I think, I think it's got, a, I don't know, hopefully above 50% chance of reaching orbit. Yes, the success of this flight is certainly an extraordinary feat. But can that feat happen? Or will Starship's first orbital flight become the world's greatest rocket explosion? All this and more in today's episode of Great SpaceX. SpaceX is developing a fully reusable heavy lift launch vehicle for transporting satellites, spacecraft, cargo, and crew to Earth orbit, the Moon, Mars, and beyond. Starship is poised to be the largest and most powerful rocket ever built, surpassing the likes of even NASA's Saturn V and the Space Launch System. Once operational, the mega rocket will seriously disrupt the commercial spaceflight industry owing to its reusability, its large payload capacity, and lift power. The rocket, in addition to serving both public and private sectors, will further SpaceX's ambitions as the Elon Musk-led company continues to build its Starlink mega constellation, charter space tourism flights, and look ahead to potential crewed missions to Mars. SpaceX had initially hoped to launch Starship on its first orbital flight test in early 2022, but the maiden voyage has been delayed several times over the past few months due to developmental delays. The company is currently targeting mid to late April for the first orbital test, but no one at SpaceX can be sure that it's going to be successful. SpaceX's president Gwyn Shotwell admitted that a lot can still go wrong. Keep in mind, this first one is really a test flight, and the real goal is to not blow up the launch pad. That is success, she said at a press conference as quoted by CNBC. Even an optimist such as Elon Musk predicted it has a 50% chance of succeeding, which means a 50% chance of making an explosion two and a half times greater than the world's greatest rocket explosion which is horrific. Back in July of 1969, it was the most dramatic month in space history, and not only because it marked the first time humans ever set foot on the moon. On the 3rd of July, just a few weeks before Apollo 11 made its momentous landing, the apocalyptic launch pad detonation of the Soviet N-1 rocket further dashed the USSR's own ambitions for manned lunar landings. Releasing nearly as much energy as a nuclear bomb, it was the largest rocket explosion in history, according to space historian Anatoly Zak. Take a look at the pyrotechnics for yourself with this footage of the blast from the past. It must have been horribly demoralizing for Soviet space officials who had pinned all their moon landing hopes on the N-1 to see the vehicle literally blow up in their faces mere weeks before the United States celebrated the Eagle's landing. Today, I saw, without exaggeration, the end of the world, and not in a nightmare, but while fully awake and standing right next to it, said eyewitness Lieutenant Colonel Semen Kamarovsky. Although no fatalities were reported, the blazing inferno completely leveled the launch pad at Site 110 of the Baikonur Cosmodrome in Kazakhstan. Rocket debris was hurtled as far as 10 kilometers from the blast epicenter and windows of the surrounding communities were shattered as far as 40 kilometers distant. Indeed, the July 3rd explosion set the N-1 moon rocket project back for two years. After the next two launches in June of 1971 and November of 1972 also ended in flames, the Soviet crewed moon landing program was abandoned, though the badass design of the N-1 will live on forever. And remember, this all took place in the latter stages of the 20th century. Now that we've crossed over to the 21st century, you can only imagine how a Starship explosion will definitely destroy everything around it. With all engines on Booster 7, that means 33 new Raptor 2 engines capable of generating a total of around 7,600 metric tons of thrust almost certainly making it the most powerful liquid rocket ever tested. And even if all 33 engines never reach more than 60% of their maximum thrust of 230 tons, they will likely break the Soviet N-1's record of 4,500 tons of thrust at sea level. It would also be the most rocket engines ever simultaneously ignited on one vehicle. 
The danger to this coin flip of a gamble is immense. And if the history of Starship's suborbital test flights tell us anything, it's that a failure to reach orbit could mean the rocket blows up. SpaceX has tested 12 prototypes of Starship's upper stage in Boca Chica since late 2019. Eight of them ended up in explosions either on the launch pad or in the sky. The most serious incident, which happened in March of 2021, during the descent of the 12th Starship prototype test, spewed debris as far as five miles away from the launch site. But fortunately, there were no reports of injuries or property damages. And to make matters even more concerning, Ship 24 paired with Booster 7 is more than twice the size of previously tested prototypes and 10 times more powerful. Remember when the pair nearly destroyed the launch pad? Several brush fires were visible almost immediately after clouds of dust and steam cleared. More likelier than not, the combination of the extreme force, heat, and burn duration likely obliterated the almost entirely unprotected concrete surface below Ship 24. With Booster 7, a large amount of cryogenic liquid was out of a new vent located on its aft end, producing a flood that spread around the adjacent pad. It's unclear if that liquid was nitrogen or oxygen, but either way, the emergency propellant dump appeared to cause a fire to start about 100 feet or around 30 meters from the booster and launch mount. That fire proceeded to burn intermittently for the next two hours, all the while posing a clear and present danger to the rest of the pad and booster if it were to spread in the wrong direction or breach the wrong underground pipe. For orbital flight, its ability can completely turn the Starbase launch pad into ashes. This is why NASA has expressed similar concerns over existing facilities at the Kennedy Space Center. In June of 2022, the Space Agency's Operations Chief Kathy Luters said an explosion of Starship could be devastating to Launch Complex 39A, which is the only site available to send astronauts to the International Space Station. NASA said it won't grant launch permission until it fully assesses the safety threats. Regardless, Starship's success rate is still 50%. But instead of speaking of explosions that could potentially happen, why not look on the brighter side? What if we compare it to the Falcon Heavy's first launch? Before that milestone, Musk also admitted there's a lot that could go wrong, a really tremendous amount. I really like to emphasize that the odds of success are not super high. I don't want to jinx it. I'm tempted to say because I feel super optimistic, but I feel as though that optimism has no basis in fact. I feel like we've got a two thirds chance of success, but in reality, we only have a 50 50 chance. The result, Falcon Heavy soared high above those low expectations, successfully deploying Musk's red Tesla Roadster and its spacesuit clad mannequin driver Starman into orbit around the sun in February of 2018. But Falcon Heavy is basically a variant of SpaceX's workhorse Falcon 9. It straps three Falcon 9 first stages together with a payload carrying upper stage sitting atop the central booster. Starship is a more complicated and novel vehicle. It employs 33 of SpaceX's next-gen Raptor engines in its super heavy first stage and six Raptors in its upper stage, for example. Falcon 9 and Falcon Heavy both use SpaceX's venerable Merlin engine. In any case, you'll want to tune in to the coming Starship orbital flight whenever it happens and however it ends up going. And as Musk said, it won't be boring. So let's take a gamble on this flight. Unfortunately, that's about all we have for you today. If you enjoy what my team and I are doing, you can become a patron through our Patreon link in the description below. Otherwise, as always, this is Kevin with Great SpaceX, and my team and I will see you next time.